so far in this course we have discussed gaussian elimination and lu decomposition for solving system of linear equations both these techniques fall under the category of direct solver by direct solver we mean that when we are trying to solve a system au equals b our goal is to modify the matrix a and the vector b we modify it in such a way that matrix a becomes really easy to invert so for instance in gaussian elimination matrix a becomes an upper triangular matrix capital u here and then because it is upper triangular matrix getting the unknown u is very easy also in direct solver we reach the exact solution in finite number of operations in contrast when we come to iterative solver what we do is that we start with and initial guess of the unknown we do not do any modification in the matrix a or vector b we find a u0 where this u0 is the initial guess and in most practical cases of course we'll see that this a u0 is not equal to b if it is equal to b then our initial guess is the final solution which is absolutely unlikely to happen now depending on the difference between a u and b we calculate some sort of a correction and then we use this correction to update the unknown u eventually we reach a point where this a u after nth iteration minus b norm of this vector should be less than epsilon which epsilon is an user defined real number the total number of operations in iterative solver depends on our initial guess as well as the stopping criteria which is governed by the epsilon and as we can see here that we can only reach the exact solution in a limiting sense based on the value we set for the epsilon so unlike the direct solution we cannot claim that we will reach the exact solution in finite number of operations so in this discussion we'll see the basic differences between direct and iterative solvers and then in subsequent lectures we'll talk more about different types of iterative solvers let us recall our initial discussion of linear systems au equals b we know that this system in general have m equation n unknowns and we are only interested about cases where m and n both are greater than 1 if we have one unknown one equation linear system then it becomes trivial and also we are concentrating by and large on m equals n which means number of unknowns and number of equals are just the same these equations may be written in various ways just like we can write au equals b we can write this equation as summation of j equals 1 to n aij uj equals bi and this will give us n equation for each value of i 1 to n we'll have one equation if i expand this equation for each i i'll get for i equal to 1 it will be a11 u1 plus a12 u2 all the way up to a1 and un equals b1 similarly a21 u1 for i equal to 2 plus a22 u2 all the way up to a2 and un equals b2 finally the nth equation will be given by a n1 u1 plus a n2 u2 all the way up to a n n u n equals b n when i write this system as a u equals b my a matrix is a square matrix in this case it is given by a11 a12 up to a1 n as its first row the second row is a21 a22 up to a2 n and the nth row in this way is a n1 a n2 up to a n n so we have a square n by n matrix our unknown is u which is an n dimensional column vector given by u1 u2 etc up to u n on the other end in the right hand side we have 
the known column vector B. Once again, this is an n-dimensional column vector given by B1, B2, all the way up to Bn. Now we know that these equations are linear and thus it follows the rules of linear transformation that we have discussed before, which means that matrix A multiplied by U1 plus U2, if U1 and U2 are two n-dimensional column vectors, then this multiplication should be equal to A U1 plus A U2. And similarly, if C is a scalar, then A multiplied by C U should be equal to C multiplied by A U. Now, with this basic idea of linear system, whenever we are trying to solve this A U equals B, our goal is to find this U when A and B are known. Fundamentally, there are two types of approaches. First approach is the direct method, such as Gaussian elimination or LU decomposition. Second approach is the iterative methods that we will discuss in subsequent lectures. We have discussed that this problem of solving A equal to B lies in the fact that these equations are coupled, which means each equation contains more than one unknown. So the idea is to decouple the equations. And no matter who are using direct method or iterative method, eventually we have to decouple the equations. In direct method, our goal is to modify the matrix A to decouple the equations. How we do so? We convert matrix A to a, some sort of an easier matrix. Easiest will be diagonal, but we usually don't need to go to diagonal. We can use gauss jordan type elimination and convert matrix A into diagonal matrix or Gaussian type elimination where we convert matrix A to an upper triangular matrix. These are easier matrices to handle and the equations are virtually decoupled in such matrices. In Gaussian elimination, we continue to use elementary row operations and we create an upper triangular matrix. That operation, of course, we have to carry out both sides of the equation and that way the B vector on the right hand side will also change with same elementary row operations. Now, this sort of method has several issues. First of all, these methods are not very useful for large and sparse matrices. What are sparse matrices? Sparse matrices contains lots of zeros. Now, if I have lots of zeros, then because this direct method is converting the matrix A to something else means that zeros will become non-zeros. When I am storing the matrix in computer, I don't need to store many zeros if I have, but then zeros become non-zeros, so I have to store it. And operations with zeros are super fast in a computer, but that is not so when it becomes non-zero. So, Eventually, we are losing in terms of the time taken for computation. Usually, Gaussian elimination takes operation number, operation count of the order of n cube, where this n is the size of the vector u or the size of the matrix is n cross n. When the matrix size becomes large, it may be several thousands or sometimes it tens of thousands or even millions. Then the number of operations becomes very large and we have to find some other way to do it. In some cases, of course, we use spatial matrices and we, on spatial matrices, the zeros we maintain 
we don't change zeros and we'll see some of these methods later on so in in some of these matrices gaussian elimination may still be used but in general gaussian elimination will create non zero out of zero and it will make our computation inefficient so for large and sparse matrices most of the time it is economical to retain the type of matrix a because we want to keep the matrix sparse we don't want to make the zeros to be non zeros and these are the cases where iterative methods are useful because iterative method does not modify a or vector b what it does that it will decouple by reasonably assuming certain values of the unknown u in a way that in each equation we will have only one unknown and values of other unknown will take reasonable guess once we achieve that we will iteratively update the values of u and how we update it will come when we talk about particular method but we will keep on updating them until we reach a stage where we can say well the norm of au minus b is small enough and we set a number epsilon which is a small real number which we decide based on the applications we are handling and then we can devise our method that how we will iteratively update how we will add correction so how exactly we will update you that gives us different types of methods usually in large sparse linear systems iterative methods requires considerably less operations or less floating point operations than direct methods you can now go back to your textbook and look at the discussion on iterative methods for solution of system of equation and then based on what you study from your textbook you write a short note compare direct and iterative methods that's all for this lecture i'll see you in next class